Good morning, everybody. We're going to wait to get started for just a couple of minutes so that we make sure we have all of our registrants um, logged into their webinar. Again, welcome those of you who are just logging on. We'll get started here in just a minute. All right, everyone. Well, I have 1201 on my end. So at some other place in the world, it's 1201. So let's get this thing started. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Um, today, our webinar is about the Lower Elk Creek Nature Reserve in Erie County and a look behind the scenes from our, some of our stewardship and restoration work there. I'm Jennifer Christman, WPC's Vice President of Watershed Conservation. WPC owns and manages 41 preserves containing more than 14,000 acres in 16 counties in Western Pennsylvania. Our preserves are open to the public and free. You can hike, walk, fish, bird, and in some places even paddle in these areas. Our Lower Elk Creek Reserve in particular is near and dear to me. Not only is this reserve one of the greatest steelhead fishing destinations in Pennsylvania, it's also the location of our watershed program's largest ever stream restoration project, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. After our presentations have concluded, there will be time for questions and answers. So please hold your questions until the end of the presentation, or you can type them into the question and answer spot at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. Tyson Johnston is our stewardship manager who works out of our Franklin, Pennsylvania office. Tyson joined WAPC in 2010 as part of our natural heritage program, and in 2016 transitioned to a role with our land stewardship team. Tyson now manages all of our WPC owned properties in Northwest PA. Kylie Mayland is our watershed manager responsible for watershed projects, grants, and the watershed staff in the entire western third of the state, which includes the Ohio River and the Lake Erie Basin. She works from our Widgeray office in Elk County. Kylie started with WPC as a watershed planning specialist in 2006 and became a watershed manager in 2010. Kylie and I worked for nearly 10 years to secure the funds for this restoration project that she will present today. We thank all of our members for their support and for your interest in our work today. Tyson, take it away. Thank you, Jennifer. Welcome, everyone. So our Lower Elk Creek Nature Reserve is located about 15 minutes west of the city of Erie in Gerard Township. It is in very close proximity to Erie Bluff State Park, just to the northwest, which the Conservancy was instrumental in protecting in 2004. The 92 acre preserve is owned in fee simple by the Conservancy and was acquired in 2012 from Fairview Evergreeners. The preserve is bisected north to south by Elk Creek and bordered on the north by CNX Railroad and on the west by Creek Road. Elk Creek is the largest and most popular tributary to Lake Erie in what anglers call Steelhead Alley. Steelhead Alley is the section of the Lake Erie shoreline located between Buffalo and Cleveland. The headwaters of Elk Creek are near McCain, which is in, the, in central Erie County along the I-79 corridor. The creek then flows northwest to Lake Erie. The Conservancy's Lower Elk Creek Nature Preserve includes approximately a quarter mile of Elk Creek near the mountain. While many types of passive recreation are popular, 
and permitted on the preserve. The fishing is the most popular activity. In particular, the anglers flock from all over to visit Elk Creek birds to on steelhead fish. Steelhead trout are unique as they develop differently depending on the environment they're in. Uh, fishing for steelhead in Elk Creek typically occurs between October and April each year. Steelhead are not native to Elk Creek and are currently stocked there by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Other species that are popular with anglers include smallmouth bass, brown trout, chinook, and coho salmon. The preserve also features 22 acres of wetlands. The wetlands help protect the creek by acting as a filter of sorts for the water before it enters. Exploring the land by foot will expose you to many wet areas on the preserve, including an unnamed tributary that meanders its way through the preserve before reaching the creek. Spring, right now, is a great time to observe wildflowers before the foliage is on the trees, limiting the sunlight that reaches the forest floor. Wildlife prospers here. Beaver activity can often be observed as seen by this dam. Birds and mammals enjoy perusing the water's edges for meals. Herons and bald eagles can often be seen in flight overhead. Upon acquisition of the land, the Conservancy had much work to do to make it suitable for public access. There was an old home that needed to be removed, along with several outbuildings. There was also an extensive dump site on the hillside behind the structures that needed to be cleaned up. Contractors were hired to perform the demolition, cleanup, and restoration work. Following the demolition and site restoration, the Conservancy then installed an improved public parking. The parking area was refreshed just last year in 2022, as seen in this photo. With the help of our volunteer land stewards and a contractor, an access trail was constructed, connecting the new parking area to Lower Elk Creek. Volunteers worked hard to build steps, retaining walls, and install trailside signage. Materials were sourced from the site whenever possible to reduce costs, labor, and our carbon footprint. Contracted elements uh, included the additional steps uh, seen on the left and the footbridge. And our volunteers have since repainted the footbridge once uh, since its installation. Most years, we host one volunteer workday at Lower Elk Creek Reserve, continually improving the maintained trail. Conservancy staff visit the site several times each year to monitor for things like illegal dumping and perform basic maintenance on the parking area of the trail. Additionally, the Conservancy has also contracted to have invasive plant species treated on the field several times over the past 10 or 11 years of ownership. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Kylie Milan, who will talk about the uh, large restoration project that occurred. Kylie? Thank you, Tyson. So today I am going to um, go over the intent of our Lower Elk Creek Stream Bank Restoration Project. When we um, inherited this site back in 1980s, in the mid 80s, a, an ice jam on the railroad tubes that you can see in on the right side of the picture here. Um, required some emergency maintenance and therefore the railroad 
imported um, unconsolidated material that was uh, brought to the site via rail car and dumped over the embankment to fill in this area and create uh, access for machinery to repair these tubes. And as such, that material um, is not uh, very well binding or supporting of native vegetation and was highly erodible. It's estimated that this site contributed uh, conservatively 30 tons of sediment per year due to this extensive erosion. And that equates to about 15 triaxles of material that was entering Elk Creek and ultimately reaching Lake Erie, just a mile and a half downstream. This material also contained debris, including logs, railroad ties, uh, garbage, bricks, and a, a type of binding material or agent that seemed to have been injected in pockets and seams throughout this um, staging area to create hard berms and um, little cement pockets within that soil. This erosion continued upstream for approximately 600 feet, creating unstable and unsafe access areas along the creek. And the shale bedrock geology of the stream bed uh, creates little opportunity for gravel retention, which is important for fish spawning habitat, <clears throat> excuse me, and other aquatic macro invertebrates and organisms. The Elk Creek drainage is flashy, experiencing rapid flooding events that um, the stream peaks and uh, rises quickly and it causes exacerbated erosion conditions along that bank. In the wintertime, that uh, heavier flow is carrying sheets of ice, which gouge the stream bank and create even larger pockets of sediment loss. And due to the, to the proximity of the site near the railroad, this project included close coordination with CSX transportation as far as including as well. And this project was uh, originated in 2013, so almost exactly 10 years ago to this day. Um, it was a conceptual idea from a stream restoration specialist with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Dave Derrick, who is now retired. And he put us in touch with an engineering consultant called in Ecology and Environment, now owned by WSP USA Inc. out of the Buffalo, New York area that had experience doing similar types of stream bank restoration projects on tributaries to the Great Lakes in New York. And because of the uh, size and scale of this project and the extensive coordination that needed to be done with the railroad. It, we also collaborated with local partners, including Gerard Township, to ensure that bonding requirements were met for the permitting. We were assisted by the Erie County Conservation District and Planning Department, both with funding and the design and permitting applications. We worked with several state agencies, including the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, the Fish and Boat Commission, Game Commission, and Department of Community and Economic Development to fund and plan this project cohesively. And we also worked with federal agencies, again, including the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, who were critical through the permitting process, and uh, the railroad itself. This project was permitted using a restoration waiver, and um, 
We also collaborated with local recreation groups, including the Pennsylvania Steelhead Association, Sons of Lake Erie, Northwest Pennsylvania Trout Unlimited, the Pennsylvania Lake Erie Watershed Association, and Penn State Extension to outreach and create awareness about the project and uh, the several components as we fundraised. The conceptual design included hardened, um, a, a tiered rock wall to stabilize the length of the left bank along Elk Creek, leading up to the tributary that enters the project site. And additional in-stream stone weirs were um, inserted to help redirect flow and center the velocity and energy of the stream during those storm events to the center of the channel to help process debris and uh, those elevated flows through the culverts to improve um, storm water management. Some of the natural features surrounding this area that we were trying to mimic in our restoration approach included shale bedrock outcroppings. Um, so this would be similar to the rock wall design that is able to withstand ice scour and the velocities that are experienced during floods. And uh, these weirs and rock Piles help create uh, slower resting areas between them, not only for fish and the aquatic organisms that live in the stream, but also for the anglers who are enjoying the property as well. The conceptual design was um, needed to uh, have Oh, hydrologic analysis and modeling to ensure that uh, we were designing it to withstand the experiences and the peak flows that would be um, found in Elk Creek. This information was used to um, determine what a 100 year type flood event would the types of pressure that would put on the structures that we were installing. And they were designed to withstand normal flows of five and 10 year flood events for uh, the wall elevation height. And the weirs were based on one year flood event scenarios. This information was also used to determine the size of stone that would be needed to ensure uh, that it did not move with those types of velocities, and also the extent and amount of rebar pinning that would be required to ensure that those stones stay in place. The overall design uh, was completed to 90% in 2017, which allowed us to create an accurate cost estimate for the construction needs of the project and begin fundraising. This includes 600 feet of the wall stabilization as mentioned. The dimensional stone sizing was determined to require two by two by four foot stones. Each of those dimensional stones were used for the face of the wall as well as the in-stream weirs. And each of those stones was pinned also included in the project into the bank are these keys, which are um, entrenched uh, rock veins to help secure the project to the bank itself and prevent flanking water from getting behind it. And there is a wetland area that seeps into Elk Creek at the um, bank here and we included eight perforated pipes within the wall that help relieve some of that seepage through the wall and prevent uh, pressure from behind it. In this uh, cross section, you can see the fabric that is laid out to help prevent 
the finer sediment from getting in and filling in the void space in this rock fill behind the wall to prevent it from becoming impermeable and having pressure put on it. And you can also see greater detail of the perforated wetland seepage relief pipes there. And as I mentioned, this project is in close proximity and actually includes um, some footprint on CSX Railroad's right of way, and therefore included uh, their participation in the design engineering review, as well as construction inspection oversight uh, during implementation of the project. And this timing was critical to get them involved in the project early on. We did have difficulty getting in touch with them at first, but once we discovered this public projects manual, which is a step by step guide on how to cooperate, plan and execute projects in coordination with the railroad. Um, it the process was quite easy after that, um, as long as we followed the steps. And this did require some payment and costs for CSX's engineering review and oversight, which was paid up front. So therefore, uh, we could not engage in this part of the project until we had construction funding secured and we were ready for the permit application to be submitted. The project funding total was 1.6 million. Uh, that has been secured so far through various uh, Western Pennsylvania Conservancy donors. We thank you for your contributions, as well as the Richard King Mellon Foundation and several state agencies contributing grant funding to help clean the water, improve healthier habitats, provide outdoor recreation experiences, and engage with the community through education opportunities to bolster the local socioeconomics. The Elk Creek construction costs to date are mainly um, contractor construction, which includes equipment, labor, materials, including the riparian planting that has yet to occur that will be occurring next month. It also included engineering oversight for the design development and construction inspection, as well as the railroad engineering oversight, which came to about $130,000 and Western Pennsylvania Conservancy staff travel and um, time for grant coordination and overall um, project uh, partner coordination throughout the process. And construction finally began late summer last year um, due to all of the contracting and insurance requirements needed. Uh, there was a slight delay in getting started, but once we got going, things went relatively smooth. Um, in order to establish a work platform to uh, construct the bank stabilization on the left bank, uh, a process to dam Elk Creek for a small section was incorporated. We pulled material from the gravel bar that had accumulated on this right side to create this dam across the entire channel. And you see a pump here pumping clean water past this section, which allowed us to transport all of this gravel material to the opposite bank during with um, the flow being bypassed. So you can see that the water here, I'm standing downstream of active gravel transport across the channel and the water was flowing clear. The whole process took about a half a day, so four hours. Um, and once the construction platform was completed on this side, the dam was removed and incorporated into it. So Elk Creek could freely flow uh, bypassing the construction area and minimizing impacts. We stabilized the equipment access ramp to the stream to help reduce sediment in the runoff coming from the site. 
and had to deal with the conglomerates or the big chunks of the stream bank that had detached from the main land and deposited on the stream bed in our project area. Some of these were 15 to 20 feet high, uh, so they were quite large and too heavy for our equipment to handle. So they had to be pulverized uh, and dealt with later. Once we had our construction ramp, we were able to survey the site and identify the location of the wall surface and lay that out as uh, the beginning ribs of the project. As I mentioned, that conglomerate material was embedded with a binding agent that created these cement pockets, this white material here uh, that was quite hard and, and difficult to deal with, um, breaking these pieces up into smaller, more manageable uh, objects and eventually pulverizing them to um, just dirt and rubble. This hard substance persisted throughout the stream bank. And in fact, there was one large seam that created this uh, hump or ridge on the stream bank that we were not able to completely grade. It even ripped our steel excavator bucket apart during construction. So it's pretty heavy stuff. We did our best to work around it. And we had our share of other troubles during construction that delayed events. Um, once we had our first row of stones laid out and we were starting to see the image of the wall and how things would go, we had our rebar staged and ready to go for drilling and pinning. And then we had a flood event that weekend and it took most of the gravel material that we had transported from this bank and washed it down to a deposited area down here. You can kind of see the ridge of it there, but it brought a lot more gravel from upstream and deposited it right back where we had borrowed it from. So uh, we were able to reuse some of that material again. It also caused a deep undercut and a collapse, a partial collapse of this bank that we were using for the staging area. So after this initial flood event, we had to uh, put some safety netting up there to warn uh, anglers and other people accessing the site not to climb over that area. And uh, you may have noticed that uh, prior to construction, there was a large gravel plug blocking half of the tubes for the railroad culverts. And during this uh, recent flood event, the large tree debris that was accumulating material was lifted and carried off and that was partially cleared out. So the flooding wasn't all that bad. There was also a metal culvert that had been in the stream channel since we acquired the property, having washed downstream decades before perhaps, and that material was removed to help clean it up and improve passage. The drilling and pinning was a unique aspect of this program or project. We wanted to ensure that the wall would not adjust and therefore each uh, dimensional stone or the large boulders was pinned in two locations to prevent the rock from spinning or um, shifting on a single piece of rebar by having two uh, secured points, it would prevent that. Occasionally a rock might uh, crack and if there was at least one uh, hole holding the majority of that rock in place, we would leave that um, where it was, but occasionally sometimes the drilling process would uh, cause those boulders to break apart into unusable forms and uh, just be used for fill. So all of those aspects further delayed and slowed the construction process. If rebar was too long and stuck out, we would have to cut it off. And I would mention that this drill rig uh, not only created and drilled the pilot holes, but it was also 
uh, the machine that drove the rebar down through that pilot hole. And those pilot holes extend into the bedrock of the stream bed below the structure. And we experienced several flooding events throughout construction. Uh, the second one and each one after that caused uh, less damage with each event. In this case, uh, some of our rebar was mangled with some debris and uh, was bent or made unusable. But for the most part, we were able to salvage and get back to work. Here's a closer look at the bank keys, and these are meant to help secure the structure and lock it into the bank and prevent uh, high flows from flanking it and creating pressure behind the wall, which would push it out towards the stream channel. These uh, cells were entrenched and set to a certain elevation based on the engineer's modeling determinations and wrapped in fabric to prevent the finer sediment from getting in and, and locking those. Again, the, a closer look at the fabric back wrap that was tucked under the dimensional stone onto the stream bed and uh, carried up and pinned into the top of the bank. The wetland seep relief pipes exit the wall between stones of the second tier and they're pretty well disguised. Uh, they are black and I, I believe they're six inches in diameter so um, they don't stick out much. And we also uh, routed the rebar holes after the rebar is inserted there was about one inch of space to the top of the rock so that was grouted. And we have experienced during several of the storm events that these perforated pipes are getting clogged with debris and some of the grouting is getting ripped out. So that will require regular monitoring and maintenance. The weirs function um, in several ways. One of them is to redirect the energy of the flow away from this bank that was experienced experiencing most of the erosion pressure and redirect it towards the center of the channel and opposite bank. And you can see the turbulence out here versus the slower water with even some air bubbles um, indicating that the velocity between the weirs is much slower. So that gives fish and other aquatic organisms areas to rest. And it also helps accumulate and um, trap some of this gravel and sediment, which is important habitat feature. And here you can see the gravel starting to build up along the corners. This helps improve access for semi-aquatic organisms like turtles and snakes, uh, so they can get out of the water and up onto the bank and past our project. And as I mentioned, the um, the weirs, this is a downstream view of the weir. The water is slower here. You can see the gravel and sand retention, creating a nice cover and uh, slow water for these smaller young of the year fish. This is like a little nursery area for them that helps protect them and keep them safe. And you see some leaf debris, which is being trapped in these areas as well, which creates food for the bugs and other organisms that live on the stream bed that the fish depend on for their food. And we did our best to minimize disturbance, not only to the water, uh, to keep it clean as we were constructing, but also to minimize our disturbance to anglers accessing and using the site. And I believe we did a good job of coexisting peacefully and had minimal complaints and several compliments from the anglers. We did our best to keep things going and keep the project going by having all the equipment running at once simultaneously. And again, you can see despite the 
active transport of materials and uh, the staging area being rough and exposed. The water below the project is running crystal clear during construction. And we also worked weekends and into the wee hours of the night to get this project done as it dragged into the months of November and December. And we experienced a few more flood events during that time. Um, in the subsequent flood events, once we had the wall height built, uh, basically as high as it would go, and the weirs were in place, they were working and performing their function to help redirect that energy, even when they were fully below the surface of the water, you can still see where they are helping to trap and redirect that energy. And here during a storm event, we see how um, even large whole trees that are coming down the stream, this was probably about a 40 foot tree with branches and the root wad and everything attached, those weirs and the project is functioning to help keep that streamlined and directed towards the center piling of the railroad tubes and help process that material downstream so it doesn't get hung up there and cause more uh, flooding and damage. And if I can, we are going to uh, see a nice overview of the stream bank from drone footage. So to summarize, in 2012, Western Pennsylvania Conservancy purchased the 92-acre Lower Elk Creek Nature Reserve. The property includes more than a quarter mile of Elk Creek, a high quality stream recognized for its world-class steelhead fishing. The property is about one and a half miles from the creek's confluence with Lake Erie near Erie Bluff State Park. And it supports globally, globally rare plants and animal species of concern. Conservation of this property plays an important role in maintaining the wetlands and forest cover that help protect the creek's water quality and habitat. This section of Elk Creek is also known to provide habitat for a number of bird species, including bald eagles and other migratory birds. Western Pennsylvania Conservancy intends to manage the nature reserve to maintain a contiguous forested buffer along Elk Creek that will provide opportunities for low impact recreation, such as fishing, hiking, wildlife viewing, and creek exploring. Just upstream from the railroad crossing along the property's north boundary, both banks of the creek channel were previously filled with unconsolidated material and over time, the stream migrated west and carried much of that fill downstream to the lake, impacting water quality. The stream's migration caused erosion for several hundred feet upstream and also uh, created unsafe and um, unstable access conditions. A nearly vertical slope about 22 feet above the creek bed formerly existed before the area was stabilized with a tiered rock wall. The stream's lateral migration undercut and eroded the slope and those stream bank failures also caused uh, large conglomerates or chunks of the bank to fall into the creek. Western Pennsylvania Conservancy's goals for this project uh, were to stabilize and restore the dangerously unstable stream bank, establish a healthy native riparian buffer, and create better public access for steelhead fishing and other recreational activities. When complete, this reserve could host thousands of visitors every year. 
and it will be a regional marquee fishing destination that will provide recreation for countless visitors and is expected to, ge to generate tourism dollars for the local economy. And our work is not yet complete. We do have other plans, as I mentioned, our contractor will be returning in May to plant riparian trees, shrubs, wetland vegetation, and seed the area with riparian wildflowers and grasses to help provide long-term sustainable stabilization to the stream bank. And we will continue to steward the property to provide clean water and healthy habitats and safe, stable access for our visitors. So we hope that you can visit Lower Elk Creek Nature Reserve today. Or if you're around later this month on April 28th, we'll be joining uh, some volunteers at the site to plant live stakes, which are stem cuttings of willows, dogwoods, and other quick rooting species along the tributary and in front of the wall. And we'll also be returning there later this fall to plant additional trees and vegetation to further beautify the project site. And we hope you can join us for that. If you'd like to learn more about our work and projects, you can visit our website at waterlandlife.org or follow us on social media. And I'd be happy to take any questions that you have now. Thanks, Kylie. Thanks, Tyson. Hi, everyone. This is Carmen Bray. I'm the Director of Communications with the Conservancy. So um, thanks for everyone's attention today and attendance to this good webinar. A lot of great information shared. Um, we have a few questions, and I will um, address those shortly. Um, sorry, and I apologize for some of the technical issues that we were experiencing earlier. Um, so if you have any more questions um, or additional questions for Tyson, uh, feel free to put those also in the Q&A and we'll have him uh, answer those questions or um, we'll be able to answer those offline uh, later. So we do apologize for that. Um, so to some of the questions that we have, um, Karen is asking about access to the property or to our preserve. Um, without going across the street. So maybe Tyson, is this a good question for you perhaps to answer related to access uh, to the project or basically to our preserve uh, where this is all located? Sure, so there should not be any need to cross the street to get to our preserve. If you use our parking lot on, uh, on Creek Road, um, you will be able to take the trail from the parking lot right down to Elk Creek. And we have plans to um, connect the end of our current trail to the, basically the end of the wall that Kylie just showed in the picture. So you will have direct access eventually to that wall. Um, right now there's, there's probably a, maybe 200 yard section that, that is not connected from where our trail currently ends to where that wall is. So that's the best way to get down there or will be the best way uh, once that's complete. So we hope to work on that throughout this summer and have it completed by this fall. Thank you for that answer, Tyson. Another question uh, from Dottie. Um, will you try introducing beavers to help manage the creek? Kylie, yeah. you want to take that one? Sure. They already exist there. There is an active beaver dam. Um, it was breached in one of those floods partially, but they have been busy working on adding branches and restoring that. And it looks like they're creating a new dam on the tributary that comes in right above the project. Awesome, thanks for that. Um, Kylie, another question for you. How many trees will be planted as part of the upcoming tree planting? 
and what types of trees? We have a native variety of trees species that will be planted. I believe trees themselves, um, we have about 20. However, there are about 300 shrubs also going into the project, as well as hundreds of wetland plug vegetation as well. Great, thank you for that. Um, okay, another question from David. Were the rock keys pinned to the rock boulders in any way to stabilize and unite all of the bank stabilization structures, or was that not necessary to do? Pinning the keys was not necessary. It is bound to the project through the backfill that is behind the wall. However, the walls and the, the, the tiers of the wall, so all the face stones of the wall are all pinned to each other, as well as to um, the first few stones that create the end keys. So not the middle keys in, um, in between the project, but the ones on each end, those are pinned to um, some of the face rocks. And all of the weir stones are also pinned and pinned up next to the wall through the bedrock of the stream. Great, thank you. Uh, a lot of great questions. So great, keep them coming. So thank you for that. Another question for you, Callie, 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 sorry, or Tyson. Um, does the does Elk Creek tie into French Creek? Can you talk a little bit more about the broader watershed um, for Elk Creek as well? They are separate watersheds. Elk Creek um, forms, I believe, on a ridge near, um, on the opposite ridge, it flows to French Creek, but Elk Creek uh, flows north to Lake Erie. So they are separate systems. Okay, thank you for that. Um, going through some, a couple more questions here. Great project and presentation. And are you confident that this will be the near permanent uh, stabilization solution? Or do you expect to have to return in say 30 years to, remain, to maintain the functionality? Thank you for your compliments. And this project is um, intended to be a permanent solution, um, minimizing the need for maintenance uh, through the extensive planning and, and pinning that was put in place when it was constructed. So um, there may be required maintenance as far as replacing stones, um, maybe that were cracked and weren't as obvious during construction that might become dislodged or um, would otherwise um, create a, a gap in the wall. So those will be addressed as it occurs. Okay, um, another question here. Um, what is the date that we are looking uh, for volunteers to plant at the site? This is for the upcoming tree planting. Yes, April 28th, we will be meeting at the parking lot at the site at 9 a.m. April 28th is a Friday at the end of the month and it coincidentally is Arbor Day. So uh, we hope that you can join us for that and you can always contact me for more specific details or if you have additional questions about joining us that day. On July 26th, which is a Wednesday at also at 9 a.m., we're planning on working on that connector trail uh, with our land stewardship volunteers. So everyone is invited to attend that and there will be more information uh, to sign up for that on our website. Thank you for that. And again, our website, waterlandlife.org. And um, right on the homepage, um, if you scroll down, we have an events as well as volunteer opportunity section where you'll be able to see 
some of these dates and information available and you can sign up right there on our website or follow up for more additional information. So thanks for everyone's interest um, in helping and participating. A couple more questions. Um, this is a great question from Jennifer. Um, she says or asks, what are some of the ongoing outreach activities designed to keep my fellow fishermen from loving Elk Creek to death? Um, to be clear, I love seeing the collaboration with groups like the Sons and uh, the Sons Western Pennsylvania Stillhead Association. Um, um, but it seems like advocating for leave no trace is not enough. So. Yeah, that's a, a common shared challenge that we're trying to work collaboratively to address um, littering and the impacts associated with heavy use of uh, particular sites is um, definitely impactful to the resources and the more we can do to help spread awareness and um, promote um, stewardship ethics as people recreate in those areas, I think it just uh, will help benefit us all. And it takes a village. So we are working together on those efforts. And I will say if, if any of the attendees today visit our property and notice that there is an issue, if there was illegal dumping or, or anything doesn't look right, please be in touch with us so we can get out there and address it before it becomes a larger issue. So we do appreciate feedback uh, that we receive from, from the visitors to our property, because obviously we can't be there every day. Uh, we get there as often as we can, but when we get tips about issues, uh, that, that really helps. Here's one more question. This is for Kylie. Were any biological surveys of fish or macroinvertebrates and other organisms performed in the habitats before and after the restoration projects, or are any plan for the future that help to analyze changes in populations as, uh, as a result of the habitat improvements? For this project, we did not conduct any biological assessments prior to the construction of the project. We are collaborating with several local universities as well as watershed groups and uh, volunteer monitors who are um, studying water quality of the site and um, providing, sharing that information with us. And uh, there are certainly opportunities for this site to serve as an outdoor classroom and host those opportunities to explore the ecosystem further. Thanks for that answer. Um, looks like that might conclude our questions. Um, just want to say thanks again for the really engaging presentation. And Kylie mentioned this earlier that, you know, it takes so many folks in terms of partners and volunteers and our members to make projects like this possible. There's someone who mentioned it's an excellent presentation and they're getting their checkbook out now to help support our work. We greatly appreciate our members who are on our presentation right now, who are supporting this work throughout the region. Uh, we value your support and um, we thank you immensely. If you're, if you're not a member and would like to join the Conservancy, please go to our website, waterlandlife.org forward slash donate for more information, um, or just visit our website, follow us on social media to learn more, and also just ex explore, like Tyson and Kylie mentioned, go to Elk Creek um, Nature Reserve, enjoy it. Um, you know, it's a great place to visit, and uh, you'll be able to see the benefits of this wonderful project. Tyson or Kylie, any last thoughts? Also, Jennifer, any last thoughts before we wrap up? I just, I just want to thank folks for joining us today. Thank you, Jennifer. Tyson? Same comments. Thank you all for, for joining us for your support, and we look forward to seeing you on the creek. Wonderful.
Well, thank you, everybody. Happy, happy Earth Week. Happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Day coming up. Enjoy the rest of the day. And thanks again for joining us. Take care, everybody. And thanks thank again. You all.